What's up, everybody? Welcome to Production Music Live. My name is Guido. I'm uh, actually from Cat and Beats. And uh, I did a mixing and mastering tutorial series for Production Music Live. And that is in the description below, so make sure to check that out. Anyway, today we are going to be talking about uh, three different sound design ways and one common mixing way of 808s. And the three different sound design are based on Drake, Little Pun, Pump, Little a Bad Baby, Travis Scott, Trap Music type of kind of ish in that genre thing. All right. Anyway, uh, let's start with first, what is an 808? And then I'll have a playthrough of each and every single one of these tracks. And then after that, I'll break down the uh, common mixing thing and then the sound design. So let's first see what is an 808. An 808 is this. All right, so it's just a slight little kick drum type of thing. And then after that, a big boom that goes boom, and it's nice. Sometimes 808 goes boom, and it goes down into nothing. Sometimes the 808 kick is just duh, and that's it. And sometimes it's duh, and sometimes it's boom. depends on how you interpret it and how your attack and release settings are set. So uh, Roland 808, there's documentaries on this. Check it out if you're interested in it. It's actually cool to look at. Now, recently, um, 808s are becoming messed with, and that's always nice in a sound design way, but they all still have the same common mixing principle way. So let's have a listen to each of these tracks, and then after that, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so these tracks are loosely based on uh, those artists slash producers um, of those artists. So loosely, not exactly, because otherwise you get copyright problems. Anyway, uh, let's first talk about the first one, Vibrato 808, because Drake's producer, mixing engineer, or Drake himself, had a very cool little trick up his sleeve. Now, first off, what is Vibrato? Vibrato is the following sound. Uh, let me just go into here. So vibrato normally, when you have uh, your your massive here, you can go over to the oscillator tab. So here you see these tabs up here. And then you can add depth here. And you can hear the pitch. See, it's... But the only problem with this synthesizer, and I'm not sure if it's just me, is that when I play this uh, track, the vibrato rate doesn't change if the pitch goes up. So what I think happened is that uh, they had an 808 sample, because most of the time you're just working with samples. They put it into a sampler, and this time I'm going to show you the sampler of... Um, of what's it called of uh, Ableton Live 10 
Here we have the sampler, it normally looks like this. And the sneaky people did the following. So you have the 808 here. It's going back and forth. An 808, and the reason why this works is that an 808 generally has a tiny little bit of a pitch shift that goes down. So, but it's really, you know, small if it's a pure 808 type of sound. Um, many of you will probably ask yourselves, how do I know what to pitch my song to, uh, what to pitch my 808 to? Pitch it so it works. So I always find that a weird question, but just pitch it so it works in the track, all right? Uh, or have it play a little bit off, like in Drake's actual God's plan, the pitch is off a couple of uh, cent. Well, it's to detune a little bit, so it's nice, you know. Just do whatever it is that makes you feel happy. There's no right or wrong there. Um, anyway, to set this vibrato, the only thing you have to do is if you look at the screen right now, you can see the sustain mode. Normally, the sustain mode is like this, but you can click the backwards and forwards function that way and then what happens is you will be presented with two little dots here and what will happen is once it's played through all the way it'll go back the other way that's all it is and then to make it cool you can move these two things it'll come back again and it's stuck there. Now, obviously you can hear the clicking right now. If you just crossfade it, you have that weird, that weird sound. All right. And if you listen closely to uh, Drake's God's plan, the song itself, in certain parts of the song, you'll really hear it just drop quite heavily. And it's really nice. Now, the mixing part, which is going to come back over and over and over again, is that you make a copy of the low end. Oh, there's another little secret trick here. Check this out. I, uh, I went into the pitch oscillator and I spread it out. So the pitch oscillator, and what you can do, normally, it sounds like this, right? But you can do this. Oh, it's not working at all. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. It's nice, right? Where well, you kind of pitch it up. I kept the bass mono under 125 hertz, but above it, it's kind of spread out quite nice. So it's a secret little tip. If you want a wide 808 sound, then um, go to the spread knob in the sampler if you're working with a sample. I love the sampler. And make sure you change the root key to what the key of the 808 is, because then you're not going to have problems with, like, is this the right pitch? Hearing pitch in the low end is difficult. Anyway, um, the mixing tip that you never, well, never really is told that much, but the mixing tip is that you duplicate your, uh, your 808 and you duplicate a command D or control D or just right click on it and click duplicate. And with this one, what you do is you add in a, um, a saturator. So you have the sound here and then you have a saturator. And what you can do with a saturator is do some tape distortion. And the reason why we distort the 808 is because with it, it sounds like this. Without it. Okay, it's, just, it's subtle, but what I can do with that is uh, give the mix that tiny little bit of an edge to make it sound a tiny little bit sexier. So I always have top end of a bass and the reason why the top end is so important of an 808 is because when you are looking at this or listening to this track on small speakers i want it to this 808 to pop out at 90 hertz there's nothing more annoying than when a song is fully 808 dominant but when you listen to it on not a full system then you don't get the full experience of the song like there's so many times in the past when i was young when people be like, oh, I can't hear the bass. And I'm like, oh, man, you got to be like in a proper studio to hear it. It's no, 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 no. I was wrong. I was supposed to duplicate it, cut it, saturate it, chorus it out a little bit for some extra width if I wanted to. And then when they would listen to it on their 
you know, computers or whatever, then it'll be like, oh, yo, this is fat. But yeah, so it's just something to do and it is nice to have. Now, taking this principle that you duplicate it and you work with the cut version a little bit different than with the uh, non-cut version, as you can see, there's more processing here. You can go a little bit crazy and that's where the distorting function comes in so instead of just saying like hey let's do a little bit of a little bit of chorus a little bit of salt a little bit of pepper ooh, you know and being all like mixing engineering and all you know like me you can also be like nah man i am just going to distort the living snot out of the uh the 808 itself and then you get this sound oh instead of this So it's nice and tight, and here it's... So anyway, again, same principle. You cut the bass, and then use any type of pedal, distortion, uh, tape saturation, whatever it is you want to do, but just crank it. So you have the duplication, you put the pedal on, pedal to the metal and you just drive the gain to as much as you think you can get away with then cut it then shape your distortion so it sounds nice together now another part which i always tend to do is on the group itself so you have to cut base the sub base so you, you you know you you hold down control and command or control or command and click on your left mouse button and you can select both of them and then you press command g then you have the 808 group all right and then you process these two together. So what I almost always do is I take a bass amp, any emulation, sans amp, waves amp, anything. I always use the bass amp from this one. And I drop it onto the bass group because you can then glue together the sound so nicely. Here, listen to it before, after. It's just fat. So this bass amp just makes sure that everything just kind of goes. Ugh, and that's nice. Now, for people that have been paying attention, you can actually see that I'm sending this cut bass over to a send. So uh, that is because I want again to be that mixy dude and just give that tiny little bit of stereo imaging in the top frequency. And I did that via using a simple delay haze effect and then after that saturating that again so that only the top frequencies, basically the cut bass, is sent there and it's kind of like a sexy little thing. So here, have a listen before and without. It makes the inner mixing dude within myself happy to do that. I know it's subtle, but... It definitely pokes out of the mix a tiny little bit and just makes me, you know, happy to do that kind of stuff. So, you know, for you, if you want to work with sends, uh, I highly suggest you do because then you can make uh, these things called shared harmonics. So you can send more into that little haze effect type of sound and, um, you know, your snare, for instance. And then it, that that area of the mix will have two sounds just kind of being together. Uh, anyway, let's continue going and we're going to now look at the slidey 808 and here I did something a little bit different, um, the slidey 808 because I only have one 808, so I don't have that duplicate channel thing. What I did here was I made a group because I tried to make a duplicate channel, but it was just not working. So here I made a group instead where um, you take your EQ3 or your multiband, at least you need the function to split the channel into three. And you just have the low end here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Where is this? Hello? Okay. And the low end sounds like that, but to the top end, I did different processing. So I used the ozone imager, which is free again to just spread it out slightly. And then after that, I dropped in an amp to distort the living snot out of the sides. And then together. No processing. 
processing. Nice. Anyway, so let's talk about uh, the actual, how do you make things slide? Well, in Massive, in, these, in the presets that I'm using from Production Music Live called Trap Pack Volume 1 for Massive 2018, there is always the function of glide. And if there isn't the function of glide, what you can do is you can go to your oscillator and you can go to your oscillator tab. You can go to your glide parts and then adjust the time of two notes being played next to each other. This can only be done when the voicing is set to monophonic or mono rate. And then you can go when you play two notes. However, this is not my favorite way because I like being uh, difficult and my favorite way is to use the pitch bend instead you can get to the pitch bend by clicking on this little button here and then you get the MIDI control and pitch bend it should automatically already go there and then you can start doing pitch bending via automation which in general for me just sounds really cool to do so and you can really you know <laughs> take it too far. So for instance, I just put this little pitch bend here. Or let's put it there. And let's make this one go down. Okay, so these pitch bends, they're really nice to use instead of using those MIDI notes, which most people tend to be using. And the only reason why is it's just a little bit easier and more creative for me to first have the main uh, bass line. And then after that, just go like, okay, let's, let's pitch bend some things. Let's just, let's just have some, some, you know, let's pitch it there, you know, and then whatever. Let's do, oh, that sounds cool. You know, let's keep that. Okay, this one's a little bit too much. And then you can kind of just have a good time and pitch bend all your little tracks. So it's just a good old time to do that kind of stuff. Now, uh, that's it. Again, this, uh, this one has no amp on it. Hey, there we go. That's why it wasn't sounding nice. This one doesn't have an overall amp on it because there is already... Well, no, it does. It does have an overall amp on it, Guido. Anyway, uh, on the overall processing, I turned the bass down a little bit because it was too much bass. Now, that's it for 808s. That's my uh, philosophy on 808s. Cut your 808s up in two so that you have a top end of it and um, saturate that to your liking process it, cut it and uh, spread it out a little bit because you can use it in the mix. It actually sounds quite nice. And the only reason why is that people will listen to their your tracks on small monitors, on you know little kitchen radio things. And if you do that tiny little bit of extra effort, you can get your 808s to really stand out and be nice. Anyway, my name was Guido from Cat and Beats. Um, please make sure to like this video, subscribe, click the notification bell. And if you want to have extra points of awesome, go over to Cat and Beats as well. Um, and, uh, subscribe there too. It would be really nice to have you there too. If you're interested in mixing mastering description below, if you want this project file description below, uh, if you have any topics you want me to cover in any genre whatsoever, I will be happy to just put it into the description, into the comments below. Uh, and last but not least, no, that's it. Peace out. Much love. Have a good one, yeah? Have a nice Sunday. All right, bye.